Hello. Today I thought I'd show you how to make a, a pinwheel block using some 5 inch squares. 5 inch squares are so much fun to use and I obviously really enjoy using them myself. So this is a, a fairly simple pinwheel block. So what I've used is one 5 inch square for my actual pinwheel and then for my background, which in my case today I've used white, I've used three 5 inch squares. So a total of four 5 inch squares to make this one block. This block is going to measure six and a half inches. So it will be a six inch block when it's sewn into a quilt or whatever it is that you're using it for. So I'll just quickly run through how I'm going to make that. So I've got my 5 inch square here and I've got my three background 5 inch squares here. So I want to be able to make them into some um, triangles. So on my squares, on my background squares, um, I'm going to draw some lines and I've actually already drawn mine but I'll just quickly show you how I've done that. So I've actually just drawn, just with a pencil, I've got a mechanical pencil here and my quilting ruler which is always good because of all the markings. I'm just going to draw a, a diagonal line right through the centre diagonal of the square. Then I'm going to, to do one quarter of an inch away to one side and then I want, I might need to turn that round to get it right, but I'm going to do another one a quarter of an inch away from that centre line either side. So I've ended up with three lines on my square. The middle line is actually going to be a cutting line, but these two either side are going to be sewing lines. So I'm going to lay that, so do your drawings on the wrong side of your fabric. So I'm going to lay my two fabrics right sides together. And now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew on both of the lines on the outside, not the centre line, because we're going to cut along that line there. But this is quite a good way of using some 5 inch squares, because often when you make pinwheels like this, uh, things don't really come together quite uh, the way you hoped, because the seams are in the wrong place. But by using a single colour background for this block, like the white or whatever colour you choose, some of the seams I can show you later will be in a funny place, but it won't really show because when it's all quilted and everything, that is, um, they, those sort of seams just disappear into the background. So that's the first seam line. Now I'm going to come around and do the one going the other way. So if you were doing a lot of, like a larger quilt with several of these blocks in it, you could chain piece these, just feed them through. But today I'm just showing you on one block. So I've done both of my sewing lines and now I'm going to cut it on that line in between. So right through the diagonal. So I've now got two nice half square triangle units. So we're on our way. I'll just give those a quick press. I'm going to press them into the colour. Now I'm going to, on my other two squares, which also have got the same drawn lines on as we did on that first square, so now I'm going to lay those, again, right sides together over the top. So now this square that we've just made with the half square triangles in it is now a little bit smaller. So you just want to make sure that that's sitting so that your diagonals are going to be sitting in the right place. You may want to pop a pin in it just to hold it. And again, we're going to sew those, both of those lines either side of that center line. And we do this to both of the pieces. So I'll just get this, so I could have chain pieced that one through. I'll just get the next one ready to bring through. Leave that there for a minute while I get this ready. Should have been ready. So that's sitting nicely, ready for me to pop in in a minute. So I'll just show you how you can just feed the next one in. So these are sitting nice and ready now, and I'm just going to feed that so that I come along that sewing line there. So I don't actually have to take that out and cut the threads, I can just pull it around and start again. 
and I can snip this one out of the way. And that hasn't taken so long so far. So now I'm going to cut both of those through that center line like we did on the first one. And this one as well. So now what we've got is four units of our, of our pinwheel. I'm just going to quickly press those. And again, I'm pressing in towards the color at this stage. Although it's partly background as well. And these are a little bit large at the moment. We're going to trim these down. Um, so, which is a really good idea because even though it seems a little tedious to have to come and trim some of the fabric away, what you end up with is some really nice accurate pieces to work with so that your block will work for you really nicely and you haven't got these sort of dodgy little bits in the wrong places. So now I've got four units here that pretty much look the same except that now some of the seams are in different places and which is what I was meaning earlier so that our background isn't going to be absolutely regular. So I'm going to trim those now to measure three and a half inches. They should measure about four inches at the moment so we're trimming a little bit away but because we're using it with the, the five inch squares this comes up really nicely. So we want this to measure three and a half inches so the way to achieve that on my ruler here I've got some diagonal markings as well as the straight markings. So on my diagonal seam that I've done that goes right across the square, I'm going to lay that there and I want to make sure that my three and a half comes through the line out here and the three and a half comes through that diagonal line out there so that everything is, is sitting nice and comfortably. And that would be that would mean that the one and three quarter inches is would go, intersect where the central point of that block is, where the, the colours meet there. So as long as everything is sitting nice and straight, your diagonal line is straight, your three and a half here is coming through the join, the three and a half here is coming through the join, everything is going to sit really nicely. And so I'll just trim that away and trim that one. Now I'm going to turn that around because it's much easier to work this way around. And again, I'm going to position that. So this time I'm positioning it where the three and a half um, inch would sit. And I've got my ruler around the wrong way. No, we're right. So that's three and a half there. On the three and a half down here, I'm at one and three quarters going through there. And again, just trim those two edges off. So what I've now got is four of those, oh sorry I haven't yet, I've got one of those, I need four in order to make my block. So I might just do that and then we'll come back and pop the block together. So I've trimmed up my four units, so now I've got these four three and a half inch um, squares with a little triangle in them and so I'm going to lay them so that they're all going around in a pinwheel circle. And what that means is that we've got this bigger white or background triangle kind of moving around it's not always on the outside because if we do that we've got a very different looking block which is not necessarily helpful if you're wanting pinwheels fine for other things uh, so it's that simple we've done our triangles we did it twice we've cut them we've trimmed them and now we've just got to join these squares up so I'll quickly run these through the machine and uh, put this block together so now sometimes these seams are going to be going in the same direction so just a little bit of extra care can be taken when you're joining up to make sure things don't move. And we'll pop the next one through as well. Hopefully some important seams will be going in opposite directions which helps them nestle but it doesn't always work on something like this. going to press those so both the units actually will look much the same at the moment 
So I'm going to press them both the same way. Then we turn one of them round the other way and it's all ready to go together as our pinwheel. So now we'll do that seam. So by doing pressing them both facing the same way, with the seams going in the same direction and then turning one round, your seams now go in opposite directions so that that centre seam, which is going to be quite bulky, will be able to nestle quite nicely. So that's quite a good little aspect of, uh, of doing things that way round. So this seam. Because we have got quite a bit of bulk in the centre, just keep an eye that it's still sitting nicely. And back to the iron. And now for pressing this time, because we've got a lot of bulk in the centre, I'm actually going to open out that seam and press that one flat. This is something I, I generally don't press my seams flat for regular patchwork, but when I've got a lot of triangles meeting in the middle like that, it can be very helpful to press that seam open so that it just sits a little bit flatter and doesn't get a huge bump in the middle. There'll be a little bit of a bump. So that's sitting quite nicely now. My centre sitting quite well. So there we have our pinwheel. I've already made one, so I now have two pinwheels. But you can see that the background uh, piecing is, a, is slightly irregular for the block, but the block itself looks fine, and when it's quilted, and I'll show you an example of it quilted, um, that tends to disappear. So I've made one here um, with nine blocks. So this block measures six and a half inches at this stage. It'll be six inches when it's set into something. So these blocks are all set on square, so that you've just got this repeated um, pinwheel going across. And where I've quilted it, you, you really don't see that the joins are slightly irregular in the background. So for me, that's a really good way of using the fabric, rather than having to make lots of pinwheels going one way and lots of pinwheels going the other way, or something that doesn't look like a pinwheel at all. So that's one of the samples. I have actually made another sample. I've made a table runner here using this same pinwheel. Um, but I've done them in a long row rather than in the square. Um, and some scalloped edges, which I'll be showing you in another video. So that was just using some five inch squares. So you just need one five inch square per pinwheel and three of your background color per block. So I think that's a great way of using up some of the five inch squares and enjoy your pinwheels. <laughs>